Anna is about the promises of the internet, alongside the confusion and emptiness we feel when trying to find purpose. With the fourth episode of the Anna series, titled Power of Potluck, I'd like to show you why this is the case. This is The Entire Law of Anna, Part 2. The Anna series is about the internet. This is especially true when you consider that the genre itself is called Internet Core. Bright colors, vomit-inducing textures, and bizarre interactions make this the primary style of the genre. I have reason to believe that the newest episode, Enna, Power of Potluck, is about the empty promises of the internet, which, time and time again, fail to make people happy. In order to ensure people actually watch the episode, I will be linking the video in the description. I will be going under the assumption that you've watched the video and will guide you through each of my own interpretations of what I think is going on. Going off of the previous episode's ending, Temptation Stairway left me fairly confused. We don't find out what Enna's wish was, although the fact that both sides of her face turn yellow may imply that her wish was to experience pure joy. This is further supported from the scenes in the latest episode. The episode starts off with Enna pressing a doorbell with Mooney in the background telling her to run. It's then shown to us that Enna's sad side is now an attached mask, which, regardless of its colour, always acts positively. Enna's wish may have come true, although throughout the episode will come to find that this positive side to her isn't real happiness. Enna enters the building with her leading the way and the mask trailing behind her. This will be important within the next scene as the dynamic is changed. Enna speaks to this creature. The creature asks if Enna is entertained enough. Seemingly, the colourful world that Enna is living in isn't enough to give her joy, and so she has ventured into the deeper parts of her world to seek a higher form of it. She's given a theatre program which, given our understanding of Enna as an internet core genre, could be a literal computer program that functions as a gateway into other entertainment. Upon Enna entering the next area, we see large interconnecting pipes. Act 1 is simply called Display. The other side of Enna describes the place as a world of endless connections. Perhaps Enna understands the purpose of the wires in allowing her to connect with other people over the internet. Connections and bonds that are meant to transmit cheerfulness. And even so, I... I don't recognize this strain of joy. As opposed to Enna leading the mask, the mask is now fully in control of her as it searches different parts of her world in an almost desperate movement. Suddenly, there is an odd room with water flowing down a drain. Notice also how Enna hides her sad side from the camera, a recurring position throughout the episode. Tears appear from a figure who summons another figure below them. The figure explains how tears can be induced by both sadness and joy. What I want to direct your attention to is the constantly flowing images of a mouth talking. Personally, I think this is symbolic of internet content that is made to evoke an emotional feeling, that is, to make someone feel good. The mouth talking acts as a constant source of information. The figure states that happiness is not found within the first act, but rather the second. We see act two titled The Rising. I think this represents the confusion one feels from exploring the internet. The joy in this act is a result of the curiosity many people experience in being lost down a rabbit hole. Enna notes how this form of happiness is strange, which when you consider our momentary satisfaction from exploring weird web pages and videos is understandable. Suddenly, in a strange void of space and time, Enna and her mask travel alongside images of other random figures. This act is the most interesting, which I think represents the identity we place on ourselves when using the internet. The figures Enna encounters tell her that she's the one up on stage. The third and fourth act are called Crescendo of a Descent. Since crescendo means gradual increase, the use of the word descent is a unique contradiction. The idea that joy can be found as one slowly begins descending downwards. The figures tell Enna to take her role and play out joy to all audiences, that it's now her mission. I think this is symbolic of the joys we feel when posting on social media or presenting an identity to the world. This joy of course comes with its downfalls when we don't receive any recognition. The skeletons present within the figures, I believe, reflect on how we reveal our personal and inner lives to people we don't know. The mask recognizes this as a story of silent movements, which it is. 
what may feel like a personal connection to strangers, is in reality just a small interaction made in vast amounts of content that are usually never heard. Indeed, though I feel the gratification of the audience, I can't sense any change in me. Hey, how could a chore like this jollify someone anywho? And it recognizes that an audience may appreciate the presented identity of a creator, but this connection is shallow and limited, and does not provide her any happiness. She questions why the obligation to share information is something people enjoy. The final act is therapy, where a figure made out of skulls begins to talk to Anna. We'll get back to what therapy might mean in this context, but in the scene, the skulls ask Anna a question. What's the flavor? of today's voyage. Abysmal! It tastes like I'm in a real cosmic stew! The happy blue side of Enna attempts to hold it together, whilst being clearly frustrated at her inability to find purpose or joy in the journey. The skull points out how the mask joy is only an exaggeration. Enna's last speech discusses how she recognises how people may find joy in each of the acts, how they feel almost familiar but she can't yet understand them. Well, the timeless journeys through this place always are familiar. Every time I acknowledge the enjoyment and pleasure, and all I got were incomprehensible feelings. This is when the sad aspect of her returns before the mask that took over her explodes. I do also find it interesting that all three expressions are present within the frame. The skull then gives Anna harsh but truthful advice before finally ending on a somewhat positive note. The truth is, though. You will never find fun in this place. But remember, it is never lost forever. Often, the greatest fun can be found in the little moments. The skull then states that Enna need not return here anymore, that this is her resolution. I don't think this is a command that Enna isn't allowed to return, but rather the resolution to finding purpose in her life is to not access the deeper parts of her world which don't make sense. Now, going with the theory that Enna's world is representative of the internet, therapy may mean how we use the digital space as a way of fixing our problems. It explains why Enna is always at two extremes. A lot of good and engaging media can be used to make us feel a range of emotions, but the media we find most abundant on the internet tends to evoke great happiness, or sadness. It's these two extremes that constantly keep us engaged, which I think may explain why Anna's two sides act so spontaneously. Anna's entire journey is her attempt at finding meaning in the deeper parts of the internet, of finding joy by learning what it is that makes people happy. It's this delusion which is the reason she only appears happy, right until the therapy act when her perspective is finally grounded in reality. And so, her mask breaks upon finally learning the truth. The skull telling Enna that fun can be found in the little moments is about how the internet can be used for positive things like communication, finding people with like-minded interests, or just generally satisfying a curiosity. But for anything beyond that, it becomes far more toxic. We return with Mooney calling Enna's name and once again telling her to run. Mooney tells Enna that she was supposed to press the bell and run because it was part of a game they were playing. Enna sees the figure on the left and appears both confused and curious. It unzips itself and reveals probably one of the most normal looking people in the entire series. Now stay with me here. Considering we were talking about identity, I think the zipper conveys the facade we have when we're online. Unzipping it reveals a sad normal looking person. Because at the end of the day, we are also sad normal looking people behind our internet personas. I'd like to conclude now as to what I think the dream barbecue game is going to be about. Now throughout the series, Enna is very naive. Perhaps someone who isn't greatly familiar with what the web has to offer, but somewhat understands small parts of it. Let's look at the first trailer titled Enna, Dream Barbecue Game Announcement. Already in the intro, we can probably recognize that the game itself is going to be slightly more disturbing than previous episodes. Flashes of imagery appear before us as we see several different characters for the last scene. A pool of blood is shown on the right side of the characters with legs appearing out of it. 
It's unclear whether this entire scene is the character itself. Briefly, we see an uncanny human-like face laugh at us. The character is weirdly displayed as having potential significance. Although for now, I'm not too sure of its importance. The next video, however, titled Enna Music Preview, The Purge Event by Metaroom, has a lot of importance. A human-like face is displayed in the background, along with a similar laughing motion as the previous person. Considering the Enna series takes place over the internet, I'm questioning whether this is the person going to be controlling one of the Enna variants, or perhaps act as an antagonist. I'm leaning towards the latter. When you consider this Anna variant is missing one arm and is holding its head in pain, the face laughing at its torment becomes quite unnerving. The final trailer contains scenes that are somewhat disturbing in nature. We see the title card Enna, the worker, and I see lack of conviction in your mind, along with numerous monitors of different faces. This Enna stands in front of what we presume to be a figure of importance. Then we cut to another Enna with a hole in her chest. This Enna variant has a completely white face, but look at the legs. The legs are both white and red. If we look at the video called Enna's New Voices, we see that the Enna salesperson personality, which is red, and the Enna meanie personality, which is white, both match up to how the colors would look like when lying down in this angle. The color scheme also matches up to the previous music preview video. We then see this Enna with no arms looking up at the sky as her face slowly decomposes with a green color. Upon my first viewing, I thought that these three depictions of Enna were completely different variants. When, if we look at other parts of the color scheme and character design, they may be the same. My guess is that this Enna is responsible for maintaining order or for working for a higher power. This would explain the salesperson personality. It is likely that at some point the other side of her personality did something wrong, which may explain why she is shot in this scene. This punishment appears to be extremely painful as we see the character suffer through the injuries given to her. We see groups of people having fun and dancing, similar to what we might see in public game lobbies. But all this doesn't mask the fact that there are going to be some truly dark aspects of this game. One of control, surveillance, and cruelty. This Enna, as we may soon come to find out, may be a lot more intelligent and mature in understanding the truth of what their digital space is really like. With that out of the way, I hope you enjoyed the video. I've attached the links to both Joel G's channel and of course the Enna video game on Steam, which you can wishlist right now. It will certainly be fun to see if my theories hold some truth or end up being completely wrong.